Folsom Prison Blues is a great classic country tune. Uh, it's possibly one of Johnny Cash's most covered songs by bands today. Part of the reason is that it's it's very easy song to learn. It's just three chords in the key of E. It's E, A, and B, and almost a standard like 12-bar blues style. It is a little different in the fact that there's actually only 11 bars, which makes it interesting. But if you know how to play through a 12-bar blues, you can play through it quite easily. So it's a very common go-to song for that reason. So I wanted to do a lesson um, just going over four different ways to solo over this classic song. We're going to be starting out pretty simple, um, just going over the basic actual solo, and then working up to some more advanced country style techniques and ideas that you can work with and incorporate into your soloing. So. Hopefully there's something for everyone in this lesson. It is going to start out pretty simple. If you're a little bit more advanced, uh, stick around though because we do dive into some different topics towards the end. So hope you enjoy it. Hope you learned something and let's get started. So the first one we're going to do is just playing the solo the way it is on the record. Um, Luther Perkins was Johnny Cash's guitar player at that point. Um, and he does a pretty pretty simple but a very iconic, very recognizable lick there. He's starting on that 8th fret, sliding up to the ninth, and then 7, 10, and 7 on that high E string. Something to note in that little section is I'm doing what's called like a dead note. If you hear that, I'm, I'm picking it three times, but the middle one I'm releasing. I'm, I'm fretting it the first one. I release it so I'm actually just muting that string. And then I'm fretting it again and, and playing it the third time. I'm just leaving my finger in the same spot, but just releasing it slightly off of that string. If you're a little bit more advanced, or if you want to mess around with this lick, you can do you can do more with it. You can you can slide all the way into it. You can do some like blues, almost like microtonal bending. You could do a chromatic run into it. Um, but so mess around with that, but yeah, the, the, the signature lick itself, it just does that. It repeats it twice and then it, uh, the band goes to the A and if you're, if you're new to soloing, if you're new to playing lead parts, that's a great thing to learn. Just learn that. And then for the rest of that, uh, solo section, just play the chords along with the band. There's A, and then it goes back to the E then two measures of B, and then it ends again on E. So for, for the first, uh, first kind of solo idea, just stick to playing just how it is on the record. The tabs will be on the screen. Obviously, follow along with those. Um, but then if, if that's kind of right where you're at, then just play the chords the rest of the solo. Uh, and that's a great kind of building block for the rest of what we're going to do. And just a great solo to learn. You'll, you'll play it many times throughout your guitar career. So that's part one. Uh, let's go on to part two.
the same little intro. Um, and like I said, you can mess around with uh, how exactly you play that little lick. But for the second part, instead of just playing chords, we're actually going to play around the chord shapes. So if you watch there, I played that A. And then that's also an A. And then I'm playing this A. And my guitar is a little out of tune. Then I'm playing that A, and I'm adding the seventh up there. So as the band's playing A, I'm just walking up the A shapes on the neck. And then as when it comes to the E, uh, I'm basically just playing E there with a little bit of the, the pinky work there to give it some flair. And then when it comes to the, the B section of the song, um, I'm kind of just walking up and then walking down. That's right there out of that B shape. So for the second part, that's a great a great way to uh, kind of play around the chord shapes. And when you're soloing, it's a great, even if you're just improvising, that's a great way to add some color to your improvising. It gets you out of just playing like a pentatonic box. Think about what key or what chord the band behind you is playing and then play around those shapes. This technique of moving chord shapes up the neck is fairly common. You actually, you do hear it on Luther Perkins playing if you listen to the Folsom Prison Blues song, the record, he does, he stays on A a little bit and then he does move up the neck playing those shapes. So it, it is, it is a common technique. You also hear it in Last Dance with Mary Jane by Tom Petty. So that's part two. Uh, that's a fun one. You can just memorize that, um, but really try to internalize it. And then in other songs, use that as a, as a strategy, as a technique to uh, add some color to your solos. All right, part three, everybody's favorite, the pentatonic box. So the song is called Folsom Prison Blues. It is a blues song. So just like every other blues song, we can just play the minor pentatonic in E over all the changes. The shape I'm going to use to demonstrate is just this shape here at the 12th fret. And you can also obviously play the blues scale as well. So the, I'll probably demonstrate using a little a mix of both of those. But one thing to think about, even when you're just soloing over the, the like a blues scale or a minor pentatonic scale, is think about the, the notes you're hitting in relation to the chords going on in the background. So obviously this, the solo is starting in E, but when the band goes to A, we can find our A notes within that E minor pentatonic, right? We know we have some there. Um, and then same thing, when it goes back to E, maybe think about, oh, I'll hit an E and then keep going along my scale or along my licks or whatever it is I'm doing, just to kind of outline that, oh yeah, the, the, the song itself is moving back to the, the E chord. And then when it goes to B, lucky for us, we have a B note here on the 12th fret within that E minor uh, pentatonic scale. So pay attention, the, the solo I'm gonna do, I'm gonna kind of try to overemphasize those, uh, those notes within the chord changes. But that also, that's a great way to, uh, to kind of level up your soloing is be thinking about, okay, what's the band doing behind me? What, what chord are we soloing over? Even if you're sticking to a, like a minor pentatonic box, see if you can find that note within, within that shape and, and, and just kind of accent it or play around that for a little bit. 
And obviously I'm going to be playing just in this one shape, but you can play E minor pentatonic all up and down the neck uh, over any, any part of this song and it, it will sound great. So that's part three. Um, like I said, the, the main thing is, or the section itself is just soloing using the minor pentatonic scale. Obviously the blues scale works as well. It's in the key of E major, so we're gonna use the E minor pentatonic. A little bit more music theory for why that is and what I wanna get into here, but maybe there'll be a, another lesson on that in the future. One other thing that's fun that I'm gonna do in this solo that you guys can throw into yours is I kind of try to make it sound like a train. And all I'm doing there is I'm hitting a, a double stop, which is a common technique in country where I'm hitting basically two or three strings at the same time. In this case, I'm just hitting uh, both on the 12th fret, hitting those at the same time, and then almost, almost like a little call and response. And then from there, I proceed to go to the A and, and continue on with the solo. But that's just specific to this song. That's a fun little way to kind of give it like a, almost a train horn sound. So mess around with that. I'm not going to include the tabs for the, the pentatonic solo section um, because I think this one, more than anything, we're all fairly comfortable soloing around uh, just a minor pentatonic shape. So this one's more just strictly improvisation. Just mess around with it, have fun. So to recap, the third third way to solo over this song is just to play the E minor pentatonic scale or the E minor blues pentatonic scale. And like I said, if you can if you can think about it while you're playing, try and try and stay ahead of it enough to realize when the band's going to be switching to that A note, back to the E, and then to the B, and then try to accent those notes within the the solo that you're playing so i'm gonna do just a quick uh just one time through uh, just play a quick solo but i'm really going to try to overemphasize accenting those specific notes as the chords are changing behind me so hopefully you enjoy it this is the the third way just soloing with the minor pentatonic scale or the blues scale <laughs> Part four, my personal favorite. Um, this one we really get into a country sound. Um, and there's obviously, there's a lot of different techniques, a lot of things going on in this solo, bending licks and scale licks and all of that. Um, and I'm not, I'm not gonna dive into each technique that I'm using and what the intervals are and hybrid picking all that. The one thing I do wanna talk about specific to this lesson is using both the minor and the major pentatonic scales over a specific key or a specific chord and blending them together to get that country sound. Uh, it's a sound, you hear it in blues, you'll hear it in other styles, but it's uh, very specific to country music is that blend of major and minor pentatonics uh, over, the same, over the same chord. Um, 
and it, it gives it a very unique sound. So one way I like to think about that, and you'll hear it in the that opening line where we're starting in E, is I, I think about the pentatonic scale. If we're thinking of a bar chord, right? There's our E major bar chord. I can work up the minor pentatonic going up the neck, or, and this is just how I think about it. I work up the major pentatonic going down the neck. So, and obviously there's multiple, you can play all five shapes up and down the neck for each of those. And I get that. Um, but this is just one of the techniques, like if I'm playing over a song and I've never played it before, or I'm just trying to improvise, I'll think about where where my bar chord is for whatever key, if it's in the key of A, I'll think, okay, here's A, pentatonic minors going up this way, major pentatonics going down like that. So for this one, we're in the key of E. And so I think about two specific bend licks. That one and that one. Obviously the first one comes right out of our major pentatonic. I'm bending that up to that. And I'm doing a double stop there. So I'm on the 11th fret and the 12th fret here. And just doing a full step bend. And like I said, that's that's right out of our major pentatonic shape. And then we're going to do the exact same uh, finger placement, but we're going to move it up three frets. And now we're doing the same thing, but out of the minor pentatonic box. So messing around with just those two, uh, those two bends out of the same key or the same chord we're playing over, e, which is E in this case, is a great way to start incorporating major and minor, minor pentatonic sounds into your, uh, into your solos. So like I said, this can translate to any key if we're playing in the key of, uh, let's say we're in B. We have that. And we have that. One's the major sound, one's minor sound. But within the context context of country music, country soloing, they both they both sound good. They both have their place. And what's fun about it is we can actually mix them. So in the solo I'm playing, I'll I'll try to point out um, I'm incorporating major and minor sounds within the same chord. So like I said, I'm starting here, and then in that same beginning, in the E part, I'm also playing here. And then when I go to the A, I'm doing it out of kind of the major shape. Then I go back to that E. And that's just right out of an E minor blues scale. But that's a major. That's minor, major. So E major, E minor, E major again, all within that E chord. And then we go to the B. So in this case, I'm thinking, okay, here's my B bar chord. And I'm going minor this time. With, and there's a major, minor third to a major third for you blues folk out there. And then I'm just ending the song with a turnaround.
So hopefully that kind of gives you some insight into how country solos are uh, constructed. And obviously for playing just over Folsom Prison Blues, you can learn the solo just like I played it, or you can just mess around with those ideas using a mix of the major and minor pentatonic scales as you're, as you're uh, changing chords. So I should emphasize that, right? Like in the beginning, we're starting in E, so I'm playing E major, E minor shapes. When we go to A, obviously now I'm playing A major, A minor shapes. Back to E, E minor, E major shapes. And then when we go to the B, we're, we're playing now in the key of B, major and minor. So uh, that, that's one of the reasons that this makes it so advanced is you're actually playing a different scale each time that you change chords within a, within a song. Um, but yeah, so mess around with even just doing these bends as the song changes and getting an ear for that. And then you can start adding licks around those bends um, and kind of start filling out your solos a little more, but it's a it's a great way to just start just to to start adding a blend of the both of those major and minor sounds into your country soloing. So that's all I got for you for now. Um, hopefully this helps, regardless of where what level you're at as a guitar player. Um, hopefully there's something in these lessons that you can kind of take with you and keep uh, keep building this skill that is the guitar. So. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, complaints, just leave them in the comments below and uh, I will try to answer those as quickly as I can. Um, if you have any suggestions on other country related or guitar related topics that you want me to try and cover, uh, mention those as well and I'll uh, try to get to those when I find time in this crazy schedule of mine. Um, but yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you learned something. And uh, we will see you guys in the next lesson.